seven-week series. And last week uh, was a week off from it, but we're back to it now. We're working through the seven letters to the seven churches that are part of the Revelation to St. John. It's Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3. So I'm preaching a series of Revelations, which is not something that I've done very often in my career. But it's, uh, it's an interesting journey for me, because when I start a sermon, I do with uh, somewhat of an open mind. I have kind of a general idea where I want to go and what I think is interesting. In it. And then I spend a lot of time doing research. I'll read commentaries. I'll do uh, textual word studies. I'll spend time trying to think through things and build the sermon bit by bit and see how it goes. On occasion, however, when it gets to be Saturday... I'll take a look at the passage and go, I'm missing it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I just haven't got it. And that kind of happened this week. Because there's one word in this passage that just got under my skin that I really hadn't been dealing with. But I'll, I'll, I'll get to that word in a moment. What I want to tell you is the church that is written to in, in this particular passage is not a wealthy church. This isn't a church that was in a city that had great big beautiful temples on top of hills that could be seen. It wasn't a seaport city <clears throat> with nice breezes blowing in. It wasn't any of those things. This was a working city. They, these, these were working people. They, they were tradesmen. They were people that were part of trade guilds, unions if you were. They had guilds in dyeing cloth. They had guilds in, in bronze, in pottery, uh, in, in, in different kinds of weaving. And so it was a hard-working people as part of this church. And it was a good solid, good, solid Christian congregation. The risen Lord says, I know your works. I know what you do. I know your perseverance. I know that you're doing better now than you used to be doing. It's a great compliment, isn't it? You, you're getting better at it. But then he says, I have, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel. Now, Jezebel, we don't really know who she is in this passage. I mean, but we do know who Jezebel is in the Old Testament. In the books of First and Second Kings, Jezebel becomes the wife of King Ahab. And she helps him become the most wicked of all kings in all of the Bible. This guy was vile, he was mean, he, he gave up worship of God and began to worship Baal. They began to sacrifice their children to Baal. They had all these offerings and, and, and sexual morality, and it just, they, it was really bad. And, and Jezebel, besides leading the country away, she, she was downright mean. She was one, someone that was willing to commit murder because she didn't get what she wanted. And she was somebody who was participating in genocide. It was her desire to kill every prophet, every preacher in the land of Israel. She was chasing them down, hunting them down, having them executed. And she even threatened God's prophet Elijah and said, you know, tomorrow you're going to be dead. And it was a mean, mean woman who seduced the people of God away from what they believed, what they were called to be. And so that seems to be the image here in Revelation, that there's a Jezebel, somebody who's in the congregation that's leading people astray. She's leading them to doing things that God would not have them to do. Now, the problem I've got is that word tolerate. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel. I thought... We were supposed to be tolerant people as Christians. I mean, I thought that's what we were supposed to do. We're supposed to be people who are loving and accepting. We're supposed to be the people that uh, love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute us. We're willing to accept people. You come into our fellowship. We welcome you. We embrace you. We want you to be here. I thought we had all this tolerance that was supposed to be who and what we were. But here, the risen Lord says, I've got a problem. You're tolerant of this woman. And it seems to be incongruent with, with what I thought we were supposed to be about. 
But then I began to realize that there's some more in this passage that the problem was what was happening with the tolerance. Because if you read the passage a little bit forward, a little more, he says to the people, uh, well, it's important what he doesn't say. He doesn't say to them, kick her out. He doesn't say, throw her away. He doesn't say, ignore her, put her a ban, shun her. He doesn't say, beat her, punish her. He doesn't say, he doesn't say any of those things. What the risen Lord basically says is, don't worry about her. I'll take care of her. I've been trying. She's not going to be, she's not been responding, and she's going to suffer. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her dead. And not only her, I'm going to kill everybody that followed her, all of her children, believer followers. I'm going to take care of them too. You do not have to worry about those people that are promoting evil within your midst. I'll take care of them. God says, they're my problem, not yours. Then he says to them, and in doing this, you will know that I am the one who searches the hearts and the minds and that you will each be held accountable for the deeds that you've done. What I think was happening in, 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 in Teresia is the same thing that we struggle with in our culture when it comes to tolerance. In that we're told to be tolerant of all these different things that are going on, to be accepting of people and, and, and you know, to get along here and go along to get along. But what happens is there's a there's slippery slope. And the, the, the temptation or the, the, the struggle is that when we begin to tolerate, and the word tolerate means to be put up with, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, suffer, uh, to, to endure, when we tolerate people that are disagreeing with our faith, disagreeing with our values, we, we tolerate them, there comes a point that we, we move from tolerating them to accepting them. We begin to say, well, you know, they may have a valid point. Or, they, they, you know, they, they, there may be some truth in that. And so we begin to move into accepting the fact that they have all these differences. Now, that doesn't sound too bad. But then what happens is there's a very thin line in moving from accepting the difference uh, that, that, that they have to actually beginning to adopt the differences. That, by that I mean, if we say, well, they have a point and we begin to believe that, it becomes really easy for us to say, well, maybe I ought to believe what they believe. And so we move from accepting to adopting. And then it's, it's, it's this one little other step to move from adopting to advocating, to, to be beginning to take the side and, and beginning to be in opposition to the church. And I think that's what was happening in this church. And as people were trying to be tolerant of this Jezebel, they were saying, well, you know, we, we need to be nice. Maybe, maybe she does have a point. And as they did that, they began this, this slippery slope of accepting and accommodating and advocating. And all of a sudden... The differences, the distinction of being a person of God were lost. Let me, let me explain that by the confession of an ancient sin in my life. When I was a junior in high school, going, oh boy, what's he going to say? When I was a junior in high school, uh, I took a German class. It was absolutely a waste of time. Because, you know, they, were, they told you if you want to go to college, you've got to take a, a foreign language. And so I took German. And as I did, the year I took it, we had a brand new first year teacher. We had fresh meat. No experience at all. Just brand new, right out of school. And he came in and he started teaching a bunch of high school juniors. And uh, it was not easy for him. When it got around to giving tests, he gave these horribly difficult tests. Just horribly different, difficult. And what I would watch happen, it started with the girl that sat right in front of me in class, is that when he gave these horribly difficult tests, I watched her cheat. She'd lean over and get the answer from somebody else. I, I needed to be tolerant of that. 
I mean, in high school, you do not tell the teacher the person in front of you is cheating. I mean, maybe you should, but it's not something that, that you, you, you do. Uh, you, you just don't do that. So, so I didn't do it. So I, I tolerated what she did. And then the next time it happened, I began to accept the fact that this is just part of it. That to get through this class, or people are going to cheat because the tests were just too hard. Now, while this was going on, this rookie teacher was setting up there reading a book. And so we were getting by with all this, what was, that was going on. And, and about the time the third test rolled around, I went from just accepting it to beginning to join in. I mean, why, why should I have to do this alone when everybody else, and it got, it got to be almost ridiculous. We were passing papers around. He was just up there oblivious. And, you know, we just, I think what probably finally happened is he got graded a test, and there were 21 identical papers that were turned in that it finally dawned on him. But it, it became to the point that when I got to the, 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 the test and I had a problem, I'd reach over and tap somebody and, point to and, and, and join it. So you see how it went? You, you go from tolerating to accepting to, to being an advocate and, and actually leading. And I think that's what was happening in, in this church. And what the risen Lord says to them is you got to remember as you're, you're struggling with all these different things that are going on that I'm the one who searches the hearts and the minds. That I, I really know what's going on. Actually, the words there in Greek are cardios and nephros. He, he, he's saying, I searched the heart and the kidneys. Nephrology, kidneys. I, I don't know why they picked on the kidneys, but basically, the, you know, everything is going on inside, I know. That's, that's a little spooky, isn't it? <laughs> that, that, yeah, we're, we're doing this, a lot of stuff in the news now about the government and how invasive they are and the fact that, you know, they're able to access our email accounts and our phone records and we go I don't think I want the government to know all my phone records you know I'd, I'd just like to have some privacy I'd, I'd, you know and here God is saying you know government's rookies I know everything I know every phone call every message I know every thought that you've ever had that's not real comforting for me because there, there are some things, like, like everyone, I'd just assume were kept private. Things that not everybody knew about. Things, you know, temper wasn't quite where it should be. Uh, things that I said that were hurtful, and we're not going to go any farther than that, just say that there were things that have happened. We're all... And I'm not so sure that I like that part where the risen Lord says, and I will judge you according to your deeds. The, the only hope I have in that is of the same risen Lord. He was the one who died for my sins. Of him it is said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So the Lord understands and knows everything that we've done. We'll be held accountable for it. He's willing to forgive us for the things that we have done. But we live in this culture where every week we are challenged to be tolerant. Every newspaper, it seems, has a different subject of the day. One day it is uh, the nature of marriage in our culture. The next day it is abortion. The next day it's the rights of immigrants. The next day it's this, and the next day it's that. And what we've got to do is what it says in the conclusion of the letter, we've got to hold on to what we have. Jesus is our Lord. And while we have to deal with all these um, different concepts and ideas, we need to hold true to Jesus being Lord and not allow ourselves to go down slippery slopes where we let 
everything of value go. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches.